Hello and welcome to the show. This is East Tennessee Music Scene on the Rise. We're here with Lauren Beeler. Howdy. Yes. We're going to be talking to her about everything in her musical world. Everything under the sun. Yes. The sun, the moon, the stars, everything. Galaxy. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so, first question would be, uh, when did you start playing music? Or when did you start with an interest in playing music? Well, um, my mom and dad are very into music and musicians. They can't play or anything, but they're, they raised me on a bunch of various musicians, like a very wide range. So I was already interested in music from a very young age when I was just a little kid. But then my cousin started taking guitar lessons. Okay. And I was about nine at the time. Nine. And I thought he was very cool. And I wanted to be just like him. So I was like, I'm going to take guitar lessons too. So I started taking guitar, guitar lessons at nine. Um, probably took it for about a year and a half. And then the rest was just self-taught, like trying to find my own style, just playing around high school with some friends and stuff like that. But I haven't like tried to pursue it until about maybe like a year and a half ago. Okay. So it's all very new. Very new. <laughs> yes. What would you describe as your style of music, your genre that you play mostly? Um, it's like an alternative rock with a, it's got a bit of like a bluesy southern feel to it sometimes. Okay. I do take, I, I love like the southern root sound in music and everything, so I tried to like incorporate that a little bit into the album. Okay. But I would say mostly alternative, alternative rock. Ish. Does most of your music come out in acoustic form or do you do some electric guitar and everything like that? The album is mostly electric. I don't think there's, I don't even think there's one acoustic guitar on the album actually. Okay. But um, it depends on the setting when I play live. Um, if it's more of like an intimate space, I'm obviously not going to like break out my band and everything. We're going to blow everybody's ears off. Not gonna have a huge amp right next to you. And no, yeah. <laughs> so drive if home. it's if it's a smaller space or something, I'll probably do like acoustic or just me and electric guitar, just chilling out. But um, I prefer doing electric setting. Okay. I like that a lot. When you have a band, a full band, do you have three piece, five piece? It's four of us. It's uh, me, uh, Derek, right over there behind the camera, is on bass. Um, and then I have Levi Cadle, who is my guitar player, and then David Lee Russell is my drummer. Okay. And they're all fantastic. That would add a, a new dynamic to what we just heard a little while ago with you playing on Oh, yeah. It, acoustic. It's the dynamic with the, with the four of us. It's very cool. I enjoy playing with them a lot. That's awesome. What, what is, where are some places that you have played recently or in the past? that you just enjoyed playing so much that you, you may want to go back? Um, I, I play Poor Tap Room down on Jackson Avenue in the Old City a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. I play down at Tennessee Brewskies is where like down in Tazewell where I'm from is like this little dive bar but I'm there once a month because everyone there is just so like welcoming and nice and supportive of like local music scene because Tazewell doesn't really have a very I'm glad you mentioned Tazewell giant <laughs> it does not have a giant music scene at all so um they're very welcoming of local musicians and I appreciate that a lot they do have some good musicians up yeah. in that area too mm -hmm. one of the guys that works with us Austin Austin Turner yes I know Austin with Divided We Stand we went to school together uh, yeah, he's a cool dude. He told me that you were Tazewell proud, so. Tazewell proud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want there to be more of a. Most of them come down this way. Yeah, to I, I want there to be more of like a diverse music scene around that area. We're, we're, we're trying. That's good. We'll not, not bad at all. We'll see if it sticks. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully with this video we can get your sound and get Tazewell noticed. Yes. So everybody will go up that way to... Yeah, because there's a lot of nice little hidden gems around the area that people just kind of pass over, yeah. especially with music. Of course, we, we, we can't let that happen, though. 
No, we can't. We, can't. <laughs> we gotta fight for it, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Fight for the music scene. Exactly. That's what we do here at East Tennessee Music Scene fight. on the rise. We fight. So, where would you like to go with your music in like the foreseeable future? Well, uh, when I first went to college, I was at MTSU in Murfreesboro, right outside of Nashville. Okay. Living it up, enjoying all the wonderful little pockets of little tiny niche music scenes that a lot of people tend to really not realize about Nashville. There's so many little... Yeah, Nashville's not always just country. No, it, there's, there's a variety so, of different genres there. There's so much that people aren't, I feel like they aren't experiencing. So I really want to go back. Um, I came back because I transferred schools. Um, but once I graduate in May, I'm, I'm going back there. I miss it so much. Most people gravitate to where they feel most comfortable it, with their music so yeah. if you feel most comfortable in Nashville with your music then that's where you got to go yeah I've, I miss it every day it's my li it's my little place so what are some of your um, influences for music your musical style and the way you play or uh, you've listened to eclectic genres mm -hmm. of music so anybody specific that you kind of pattern yourself by um I remember I was a very little kid. I heard I heard um, "Criminal" by Fiona Apple for the first time when I was like four, and I was like, "This is the best song ever." Although, like, it's, when you listen, when I listen to the lyrics now, I was like, I sh "This is not a good song for a four-year-old mm -hmm. to be listening to." But um, I really love Fiona Apple, um, Florence and the Machine, Saint Vincent. But I was raised on like Pink Floyd. Soundgarden, um, Death Row Toll. Um, Back then there was Alanis Morissette was really popular Yeah, Alanis as well. Morissette, I like her a lot. But Fiona Apple in that era, in yeah. that era was, was my jam. Um, but yeah, my dad listened to a lot of like psychedelic rock and then 90s grunge and stuff like that. So it's that. Sounds like a lot of 70s rock going on there like the yeah, 70s 80s i really love um 80s new wave like the new wave alternative genre and stuff like that um like new order um talking heads stuff like that okay back in the 80s i was listening to big hair bands right on my mom's a hair was a <laughs> hair band girl right. yeah so it's motley Crue. yeah guns and roses yeah. kiss well kiss was way before then too but they <laughs> ACDC, all those guys. But that's kind of what got me interested in music. And even though I've never been able to play, mm -hmm. I've always just carried that with me and kind of got me interested in starting this at such an old mm -hmm. age as I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a grandpa. Thanks, thanks a lot. You're welcome. But yeah, like hair bands, you say like, I can't, whenever like a hair band song is on, I can't help but like, I can't help but like want to dance. It's nostalgic to me. Yeah. It's like it brings me back to when I was younger, a whole lot younger. <laughs> and I really enjoyed the music. I I went through all sorts of stages like you probably have done yourself. Yeah. Like country music, rock and roll, back to country a little bit, rap. Yeah. I even interested, was interested in that for a while. But has that sort of stuff uh, influenced your musical style? Like all the different genres. Yeah, because I don't, it's really kind of hard to, I say alternative-ish when I refer to my music because I feel like it doesn't really fit into like one specific area, which I feel like that's the same with a lot of musicians now, yeah. a lot of um, independent musicians because, you know, the glory of being able to record your stuff independently now because of like new technology and stuff and the wonders of garage band on your MacBook and stuff. Oh yeah. People don't have to just pigeonhole themselves in a certain genre to get noticed by a certain like label or something like that. Yeah. People have um, musicians have much more freedom now. Yeah. With experimenting genres and stuff like that, and I really really love that. It's good to be an independent, so you can have your own say in what you put out there. Yeah. I know some, I would guess some labels probably want you to push in one direction and yeah. stay that way. Or they'll turn you in the other direction and go totally different than what you're used to. Yeah. 
which is fine sometimes, but like when it comes to actually trying to pursue music and stuff, um, you get to just kind of experiment and mess around now and see what sticks. Like maybe if I like, I can make like a country album and then I can also make like an alternative album and then we'll see like who ends up liking it and like maybe I'll end up signed to like a country out um, country label maybe I'll get signed to like a rock label it's just like you can make all these different versions of yourself yeah now and you don't have to pigeonhole yourself and that's like it's really freeing I like it a lot back in the 90s that's kind of what um, Garth Brooks did yeah he started out as pure country and then he went sort of sort of rock and roll yeah a little bit kind of like alternative lighter rock yeah but then he ended up right back into the country <laughs> Because that's where his niche was. Yeah. But wherever you feel is your niche, that's where that's where you should yeah. go. I mean, always follow your heart and your dreams. Yeah. And, and that's the whole one of the, one of the points of this show is to hopefully promote bands or sing, um, single artists. Mm -hmm. You have a band, but you're also yeah. you also play on your own. And we want to promote all those artists in the East Tennessee music scene. East Tennessee, West Tennessee, uh, Central Plateau, yeah. Tennessee area, but everywhere we can, we want to promote you guys to further get your music out there. I think this show's a great idea. I think like once I like realized that you were doing this, I was like, this is awesome. Because East Tennessee needs something like this, especially because I don't think people realize that there's so many great musicians around here. Yeah. I want to make sure that everybody knows that yeah. as much as I can. I mean, with YouTube, you can only go so far. Mm -hmm. You have to have the subscribers and the people sharing yeah. the, the show around to get everything out there. But once that happens, everything can just open wide up. Yeah. Because this area of the country, just like, just like this little bit of like East Tennessee, and then you get over to like North Carolina and then Kentucky and stuff like that. That little triangle right there has like such a good music scene and it's very diverse and it's not just bluegrass and no. country you've got that's rock. what people don't realize they, we've got rock we've got metal we've got we've got rap we've got so much that is just like itching to be discovered and there's shows going on almost every weekend yeah for the different genres exactly here and over in nashville i mean yes. in nashville you can go down one street and different genres are playing at every bar or mm -hmm. establishment down the down the line yeah and I'd like to see that over here. That'd be great. We, 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 we need venues sort of like the uh, Open Chord here, who's allowed us to do these videos. Yes, the Open Chord is fantastic. And we want to see them thrive and grow and improve the music scene even more than it has already. I mean, we've seen it grow leaps and bounds for the last uh, 10 years that I've been here. I mean, everybody's working together. Everybody's doing their part to try to further the music scene. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm not a musician, this is my way of trying to further the music scene. Yeah. And I do promotions and show booking and everything like that as well. But uh, Open Chord's been where I started. That's awesome. I first came here. This was the first venue that I watched a show at, and I was just blown away. <laughs> who, would you, who would you see? Do you remember? You would have to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long ago. Um, I believe it was a heavy metal show. Cool, cool, cool. But it's been so long ago. I mean, I've seen bands like Killing Grace from Nashville. Yeah. Um, bands like War Clown from here. Uh, all War sorts Clown, that's a great name. That's a he heavy metal name. That's an yeah. awesome name. <laughs> they, they came up with it. Uh, you'll have to watch the video whenever it comes up for okay. them. And awesome. they'll, they'll explain how they came up with it. That's awesome. That, that creates such a great visual image. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're great guys. I mean... Everybody that I've met here has been great. I mean, they've been welcoming to anyone in the scene. It doesn't matter who you are. They welcome you and they, they try to help as much as they can. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the Knoxville music scene is a very open and welcoming um, little scene. And I don't know why that surprised me when I was trying to like get over here in Knoxville and play some more shows, but like everyone's like, yeah, come on. Yeah. We, we want everybody to play here. I mean, it, it's not a scene without artists. Mm -hmm. So the more we have in here, the better. Yeah. 
it kind of thins out the the show days that, we, that each band can pick. But yeah, the it's more the merrier. Yeah, definitely. You said it best there. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a nice little melting pot of artists. That's true, and we will try to get you down here as much as possible as soon as we can. I'd love that. Yeah. I will try to push as many people as I can to get you down here. And hopefully people watching this video will uh, check you out. You have some stuff on YouTube. Yeah, I have a little SoundCloud, bit on things like yeah. that. Um, I released my first album on October 13th. It's called the Dixie Plaza. It's named after a seedy motel in Tazewell. Okay. Um, just wanted to honor a landmark, I guess. Um, and it's all self done by me. I did all the instruments on it. And once again, Derek back there in the, behind the camera, he did all the producing and the mixing and mastering and stuff. And we funded nice. it through Kickstarter. It was all just like a really nice, like collaborative effort to get this thing together. And it was like just a really humbling experience to see like people actually donating and like yeah, crowdfunding seems to be the way to go for yeah, independent artists it's it was great i was i was just like so touched by like all the people that like came together to help me and it um so it came out on october 13th and it's on itunes soundcloud um spotify google play amazon music um I you have, have it on cd copy. baby yeah um yeah that's where i did all my CD printing from oh, okay. so it is on CD Baby. CD Baby's fantastic. A lot of locals do that. I love CD, Baby, CD Baby so much. But um, yeah, so it's just all out there throughout the internet. And we'll we'll try to gather all that information up and put it in the information portion of the video down below. If you look down, scroll down there, you'll see it down below, and a little bio from Lauren Beeler here. And we want to make sure that we get that out there. So people will hopefully just grab onto your music <laughs> and hold on for dear life. Never let go. Yes. I appreciate it. We want that for every band in this area. Thank you. Band and original artist, singular or together, mm -hmm. with your cool bassist back here. Yeah, he's he's a superstar. I'm embarrassing him. <laughs> oh, we don't want to embarrass him anymore. I do it every day. It's fine. Well, last thing would be. Uh, where in the United States or the world would you like to travel to to play your music? Play my, ooh, that's a fun one. I to be anywhere. I love uh, the scene in Brooklyn, New York. They have a really nice like alternative indie scene and it's very, very cool. I would love to like play at the Mercury Lounge or something like that. Okay, Mercury Lounge. I'll have to find somebody that's <laughs> all the way up out in, there Brooklyn. in Brooklyn, New York at the Mercury Lounge. She <laughs> would like to play. Hit me up, please. And you can find her information down below. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a click. Yes, definitely. Well, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you for having Hopefully me. Hopefully this hasn't been too awkward for no, either I one of us. No, I thought this was fun. This was chill. <laughs> this is much more chill than I was expecting. I didn't know what to expect. But I, like. I try to make it as chill as possible and not real serious because I want people to feel comfortable and not like the stereotypical straight up and down, you must answer these questions in this order okay. and never veer off into a tangent somewhere. Yeah. We like to go off in tangents sometimes. I <laughs> am all for tangents. That is like 80% of my day is just me doing tangents. So nice. right on. I really appreciate your interview style. <laughs> I'm still learning. These past interviews from starting in uh, late December all the way through now. I'm still learning how to do this stuff. So hopefully people enjoy and laugh a little bit as I'm muddling my way through. <laughs> anyway, uh, look for Lauren Beeler on all the internets. All the internets, all the yes. things. And we will see you later. This has been East Tennessee Music Scene on the Rise. I'm Scott Thomas, and this is Lauren Beeler. Thank you for having me, Scott. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for being here.